what is the black people's matrix? Well, imagine waking up to a reality where in which your enemies control all the information that you believe. Think about the immense power this scenario would give those enemies over you. Now imagine that these enemies were history most corrupt, notorious, deceitful, most narcissistic, and most racist enemies. Naturally, those same proclivities will manifest within the information that they present to you. It's who they are, it's the way they've always been, and it's the only way they know how to be. This illustrated scenario is the forgotten relationship and reality that presently exists between black people and the white society. Many black people have become psychologically desensitized from seeing this reality. It's very much like within the first Matrix movie, wherein which Neo awakens to discover that humans were mentally enslaved by soulless beings. Moreover, that, that these soulless beings were the programmers of everything that the humans believe. These soulless beings kept the humans believing lies that kept them trapped in a state of mental enslavement. It was achieved by feeding them um, disinformation, which allowed the soulless beings to exploit the humans without resistance. The white oppressors often reveals through movies what they've done to black people. Some describe this practice as being a form of ritual mocking of the victim, but it's actually a practice that allows the oppressors to avoid the law of karma called revelation of the method. There are hidden rules and principles within this warfare of domination that must be adhered to. The oppressors must make their oppressive tactics available to the oppressed. They therefore often embed them within movies, TV shows, and books. They don't do so by making it obvious and clear. They make it appear as being merely entertainment. It is done only enough to be the threshold required to avoid the law of karma. Because the oppressive tactics have been made available, when the oppressed do not act upon the available knowledge, by default, they've given the oppressors permission to oppress them, to rule over them. It's a social contract that allows the oppressors to avoid the law of karma. Although most black people no longer experience the same type of blatant white subjugation tactics as our grandparents had, we however still experience white subjugation. When the more blatantly white racist subjugation tactics used in the past against black people had become no longer socially and morally acceptable to changing times and resulted in unprecedented unified black protests, the white oppressors did not abandon their practices of deploying subjugation tactics against black people. Uh, their proclivity for doing so is much too immense for them to just give it up. They instead merely developed more sophisticated methods for subjugating black people. They now covertly subjugate black people without most of us even realizing it through many nefarious social science tactics. Social science is one of the branches of science devoted to the study of human behaviors, specifically how people interact with each other, behave and develop as a society. It's now being used by white oppressive forces for maintaining false assumptions within the society that aids in maintaining white social dominance over black people. They now do so by deploying an insidious perception management system that shapes public perceptions in ways that facilitates the white society's ongoing subjugation of black people. Perception management is a propaganda technique that involves altering the public perception of reality to suit the objective of the ruling class. This is not a conspiracy theory. Perception management programs are well-proven systems that are essential part of modern information warfare. Unlike the more blatant racist subjugation tactics used in the past, such as the Jim Crow and apartheid segregation systems that black people could easily recognize and therefore develop counter strategies against, this perception management system is not easily recognized nor is it easily comprehended by most of its black victims. It therefore provides white oppressive forces with their most proficient system used for subjugating black people. Because the subjugation of black people always works best when his black victims no longer recognizes the subjugation tactic. This is our hidden reality. The ignorance of the oppressed is the oppressor's greatest weapon. Therefore, those who know the truth must teach African proverb, social science 101. Perception 
is not reality. Perception is rarely ever consistent with reality. The public perception of reality is actually sh is not shaped based on facts. It's actually shaped by the narratives that are fed into a society. Therefore, the basic tool required for the distortion of public perception of reality is to merely constantly feed distorted narratives into a society. The public at large would then function based upon those false narratives rather than the true reality. This is precisely what white oppressive forces have done. Because, because they write all of the narratives that are systematically fed in our society, they therefore literally owns the perception of reality. They've exploited this scenario and this immense position of power by systematically feeding false information into a society that misshapes public perceptions in ways that aids in maintaining their social dominance over black people. It also distorts the perception of black people in ways that allows the white society to continue the exploitation and subjugation of black people without any black resistance. It's only by learning how this nefarious perception management system works, uh, how it's being deployed against us, and then by developing counter strategies against it, um, is how we will liberate ourselves. All societies function based upon the narratives that are repeatedly fed into them. This is a social science fact. The distortion of the public's perception of reality is a lot much more easy than most people realize. The basic tool required for the distortion of reality is to control all the narratives. If you can control all the narratives, you can control all the people who believe those narratives. Because the white establishment controls all of the narratives that are fed into our society, they therefore literally owns the perception of reality. By constantly feeding false white exalting and false black marginalizing narratives into a society, white social scientists and white propagandists have created an elaborate illusory truth effect, also known as illusionary truth effect, that aids in maintaining their social dominance over black people. We who are aware of it, we call this illusionary truth effect the black people's matrix. Uh, the illusion, an illusionary truth effect is when people have been made to believe false information is true because they've been constantly subjected to the false information. They then begins functioning based upon the false information rather than the true reality. This is what the white society has done. They've, by systematically feeding false information into a society, um, they've created the perception that whites are inherently superior to black people. This has created an illusionary truth effect that shapes assumptions within society that directly affects hiring, firing, promotion, criminal sentencing, and even film castings in ways that aids in maintaining white social dominance over black people. Side note. I never said that what I teach will be easily comprehended by it all. I only said that it would be the black liberating truth that would free our minds from white mental slavery. There is in fact neither a struggle nor a fight more important for black people than addressing this one, this nefarious social science subjugation tactic, because it's how white oppressive forces deploy, is becoming their greatest weapon deployed against black people. It's how they vilify us in order to manufacture societal consent for the mistreatment of us. It's how they falsely marginalize us to create the illusion that they're superior to us. It's how they dehumanize us to make others insensitive to our plight. It's how they keep us believing the fraudulent worst narratives about ourselves in order to keep us demoralized, divided, and self-loathing. It's also how they keep black collective aggression shifted away from the white society and redirected towards ourselves. Keeping us within this, um, keeping us within this mental state, is how they prevent us from unifying against the white society. It's literally how they mentally enslave us. We appropriately call this system the Black People's Matrix. There are three core reasons for deploying this elaborate perception management system against Black people. The first reason is because the white society's exploitation of Africans has provided it with an era of which it has flourished most throughout history. To allow this era to end would be directly against the interests of the white society, especially given the fact that the white society's dependence on Africa's natural resources is indefinite and forever. Therefore, through, through their monopoly of information that we receive, the white ruling class 
have distorted our collective minds in ways that allows the white establishment to continue the exploitation of black people and subjugation of black people without any black resistance. The second reason is after slavery was abolished in the U.S. in 1865, the advancement made by African-Americans following slavery was extraordinary. In spite of receiving no reparation and being constantly plagued by the evils of white racism, uh, African-Americans had built many of our own self-efficient cities across the country. Those black built cities often exceeded their, neighbor, their neighboring white cities. This resulted in many white mobs um, rioting and destroying those black communities. Uh, black segregated schools that also made a significant difference in, black, in, in our society. Black literacy, which was 30% in 1919, had dropped to less than 7% by 1955. Black illiteracy had almost disappeared in the North. In some places, black illiteracy was less than white illiteracy, such as in 1950 in New York. In 1950, black colleges had 71,000 students, 553 black people had doctor degrees. Moreover, after and at, between the years 1870 and 1940, African-Americans had submitted 726 invention patterns to the U.S. Patent Office. Those numbers more than double those submitted by whites during the same time frame. This scenario of black people outpacing whites and, and making revolutionary inventions has never changed. The hidden fact is that in spite of cultural traumas wrought by the injustice of white racism and slavery, most inventions that have revolutionized the world were in fact either invented by black people or were directly inspired by early inventions by black people. This is our hidden reality. When a well-packaged web of lies had been sold gradually to the masses over generation, the truth would seem utterly ridiculous and the speaker will appear to be a raving lunatic. Because we've been lied to. The hidden reality is that without black people, there would exist no internet, no cell phones. We wouldn't have cameras and microphones on our cell phones. There would be no emails, no GPS, no hearing aids, no touchstone phones, no caller ID, no home surveillance uh, security systems, no game cartridges, no, uh, um, no cataract laser removal scope, no, no touchstone phones, no motorized vehicles, no steam engines, no traffic lights, no working light bulbs. No elevators, therefore no skyscrapers, no air conditioning, no modern color PC, no 3D movies, no central heating, no refrigerators, no helicopters, no washing machines, no lawnmower, no dryers, no refrigerated truck, no blood banks, no fiber optic, no nanotechnology, no accurate weather forecasting systems, no sanitary pads, no bathroom tissue holder, no pencil shop, etc., etc. The technological advancement made by black people is unrivaled by any other racial group. The hidden reality is that there's not a single person on this planet whose life has not improved because of inventions made by black people. White oppressive forces fear that if left unimpeded, that the black population could elapse to white society's social dominance. So it was decided by creating a perception management um, system that negatively distorts virtually everything that black people believes about ourselves. They could condition us to perceive ourselves through a false and inherent fear identity that aids the white society in maintaining their social dominance over us. White oppressive forces also feared that if it became commonly known that most revolutionizing inventions come from the minds of black people, that this could also undermine and erode the white society's position of social dominance over black people. Because according to white social scientists, in order for a dominant group to maintain its position of social dominance over its subordinate groups, the narratives fed into a society must endorse the dominant group's position of social dominance. This means that the narratives fed into a society must falsely exalt the dominant group over its subordinate groups. Doing so conveys a subliminal message that the dominant group is inherently superior and is therefore supposed to rule over its subordinate group. White social scientists describe the nefarious practice as merely instilling a value system into the subordinate population that makes them adhere to the authority and existing infrastructure of the dominant culture. Okay, now the true narrative that most revolutionizing inventions are coming from black people actually undermines the white society's position of social dominance. Okay, therefore, this perception management system has to distort that fact. Therefore, white propaganda designers have concealed this fact through false propaganda campaigns that falsely gives whites credit for most revolutionizing inventions that were made by black people. 
Case point and proof. The white society miseducates us by teaching us that Thomas Edison is responsible for lighting up the world. However, the true facts are that after Thomas Edison patterned his light bulbs, no companies purchased it, no mass produced it. This is because it was deemed not efficient enough. It lit very dimly and lasted only a few minutes. The inventor whose light bulb was purchased, mass produced, and spread around the planet was, it, was invented by an African-American named Louis Latimer. He sold a patent to the U.S. Electric Company in 1881. He was also dispatched around the world to overseas installation. Therefore, in reality, it was actually a black man that lit up the entire world. While it's Thomas Edison that was given um, full credit for inventing the light bulb that lit up the world, this is merely a reflection of the time when big ideas couldn't possibly as uh, be ascribed to black people, especially when the, the Bogian eugenic movement was considered serious science. Therefore, the truth has been hidden that it was actually an African-American man named Louis Latimer that lit up the entire world. Uh, Latimer literally wrote the book on electric lighting. And he also holds a patent for the first electric lamp. He's also the man that drew up the patent schematic design for Graham Bell's telephone. A black man drew it up. The white society also miseducates us by teaching us that Henry Ford invented the first um, automobile. It was actually an African-American inventor and carriage company entrepreneur named Charles Richard Patterson that built the first automobile. The C.R. Patterson and Sons Company started out as a carriage building firm in 1873. In the early 1900s, uh, Patterson and his Sons converted the company from a carriage business into an automobile manufacturer. It was, it was released in 1905 and sold for $850. It had a four-cylinder continental engine. C.R. Patterson began making automobiles long before Henry Ford and his automobile were made. In fact, his automobile was considered more sophisticated. C.R. and Patterson's sons were forced out of business by Henry Ford in 1939. Through this practice of whitewashing facts to falsely give their racial group credit for most inventions actually made by black people, the collective self-esteem of the white masses has been falsely bolstered at the expense of the collective self-esteem of the black masses. According to white social scientists, truth is not important for shaping society. What's only important is what's perceived as being truth. Because people function based upon their perception of what's true rather than what's actually true. This is why they say perception is more important than reality. Therefore, this perception management system is deployed like, like a media marketing campaign that constantly falsely exalts the white brand and falsely marginalizes the black brand to create false perceptions within the society at large that aids in maintaining white social dominance over black people. These deliberately created false perception within society directly affects hiring, firing, promotion practices in ways that aids in maintaining white social dominance over black people. This is our hidden reality. The general population doesn't know what's happening and it doesn't even know it doesn't know. Noam Chomsky said that. Now, here's the third reason why this perception management system um, it, it is deemed necessary. They have to keep black people believing the fraudulent voice about ourselves. During the 1960s, African-Americans unified protest against the U.S. system of white um, supremacy was unprecedented. African-Americans confronted it on all fronts. It was confronted through civil disobedient tactics, tactics militant means, nonviolent protests, and with black lawyers pleading for equality within America's highest court. Um, Supreme Court. African Americans unified protest still remains unrivaled by any other racial group in U.S. history. African Americans have unknowingly proved themselves as being the greatest threat against the U.S. system of white supremacy. In the face of this unprecedented unified black protest, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover said that the unification of the American Negro was the greatest threat against the nation. To remedy what was then called the Negro problem in, in 1967, President Lyndon Johnson put together a committee called the Kerner Commission. Their assignment was to study the Negro problem, find the cause of the problem, and then develop counter solutions to overcome it. 1968, white social scientists hired by the Kerner Commission determined that the aggravating core factors for that decade's unprecedented unified black protests was caused by an elevated and unifying black collective self-esteem brought on by the emergence of the black pride movement. 
They also learned then that while the white oppressors, through their weaponry advantage of guns and cannons, could brutally invade and enslave black people, they however cannot win our loyalty or sustain peace indefinitely with us unless our minds had been manipulated to think in ways that prevent us from unifying and seeking retribution against the white society. Because whenever people are oppressed for long durations, their collective aggressions towards their oppressors will continue to grow until acts of a massive rebellion becomes inevitable. The oppressed always eventually rebels. It's an inherent response within the collective human psyche whenever people are held under long-term oppression. This is the reality. Whenever people are under long-term oppression. This is what was happening among the African-American population during the 1960s. White, oppressive, white, white racism had reached a boiling point within the collective minds of African-Americans, which resulted in that decade's unprecedented unified black protests. Therefore, this, um, those white social scientists largely determined that they could subdue unified black protests by deploying a perception management system that keep black people's collective self-esteem low by keeping us believing the fraud and the worst about ourselves. It also shifts black people's collective aggressions away from the white society and redirected towards ourselves also by keeping us believing the fraud and the worst about ourselves. This is what's happening to us. We're being constantly manipulated by a perception management system to believe the fraud and worst about ourselves. The white media's unrelenting negative depiction of black people that amplifies the negative to the point that it distorts our reality is much more than just biased media reporting. It is actually a insidious black racially demoralizing divide and conquer psychological warfare campaign. Demoralizing divide and conquer is a method of maintaining control over a targeted population through constant and unrelenting demoralization through unrelenting media propaganda campaigns. This is what's being done to us. This is why all of our narratives are so unrealistically negative. Most people naively believe that the media reflects our reality, but is in fact rarely ever the case. The media most often forms our behaviors, beliefs, and perceptions of our collective selves through the depiction that it routinely shows us. Because perceptions created by the media leads to non-deliberate thoughtful decision-making or the decision below the level of consciousness. It has also been called thinking without actually thinking. And it ultimately leads to the unconscious similar behavior among those receiving the information from the media. The white society exclusively controls all mainstream media depictions of black people. They also write all black people's narratives. The white society therefore literally owns black people's interpretation of ourselves. White oppressive forces exploit this scenario by negatively controlling how we perceive ourselves. People are easily controlled by the information they receive by themselves through the media. When people are constantly fed negative, demoralizing disinformation about themselves, they become naturally demoralized, divided, self-loathing, and it also attacks the core foundation of what bonds the people, and they can then be ruled over forever. It doesn't matter that the information presented is untrue. Most people will act accordingly to the information because they've all been given the same negative misinformation about themselves. This is precisely what white oppressive forces are doing to black people. It is our hidden reality. The system is deployed like a massive media marketing campaign that constantly subjects black people to receiving only the fraudulent worst contents about ourselves. Within this system, fraudulent black racially demoralizing propaganda is being pumped unrelentingly into the unsuspecting minds of black populations without being challenged or counterbalanced by an equal amount of positive racially affirming information. It conveys the subliminal message that black people are now our own worst enemies and that we therefore need whites to govern over us. Moreover, that black people should admire, respect, and trust only white. This system is extremely effective because when black people are constantly repetitively presented these, these uh, false information from trusted white media sources, it can be very difficult to resist its implied propaganda programming, especially when the propaganda is being deployed daily and so unrelentingly. Its weapon is the demoralizing message that it carries and the way that it adversely affects black people in terms of our behaviors. With, with time being unable to refute the constant negative information being told about ourselves, many black people become besieged by the misinformation and internalize it. And we accept it. Many black people 
for many black people, it creates a profound humiliation. We ask ourselves, damn, why our people can't get our shit together? The unrelenting humiliation causes many black people to become demoralized, divided, self-loathed, and resentful towards our people. In the most extreme cases, it, it causes many black people to want to disassociate with other black people. Uh, so, um, psychologists call this disassociation. It's a defense mechanism that evolves to put a distance between themselves and from the pain of being constant humiliation. Some black people will then make it their personal mission to go out of their way to try to show white people that we're not all bad. This nefarious psychological warfare tactic works by tapping into the immense power that shame has upon the human mind to mentally enslave millions of black people. It's how the white society now controls us. It is a process with the objective to erode the morale of, of black people through continuous demoralization. By destroying our morale, it can even prevent our will to fight. It's very effective. No group can be constantly inundated with negative demoralizing misinformation about themselves and not be adversely affected. It's not possible. You know, this is easy to see. You know, how cartoons and unrealistic it is that all information we receive about ourselves are negative. This is all possible because people are like computers. All you have to do is keep giving them certain information and you can persuade an entire generation towards an implied, an implied prop, um, objective. It doesn't matter if the information is true. Most black people will act upon it because they've all been given the same negative information about ourselves. This is the warfare that the white society deploys against black people. Many black people insist that they've confirmed the negative assessment. Many, many insist that they can, they have, but, it, but it's untrue. You know, sometimes easier to fool people than it is to show that they've been fooled. Those black people that insist that they've confirmed their negative assessment about our racial group based upon their own experiences are in fact delusional because it's not humanly possible to assess the collective state of, of millions of people based upon anyone's individual experiences. It's not humanly possible. Our negative perception about our racial group were actually embedded into our minds by the white society who controls all of our narratives, our media images. They literally owns our interpretation of ourselves and they maintain their dominance over us by keeping us demoralized, divided, and self-loathing. This is the hidden reality. The reason why many black people in, insist that they confirm their assessment is because once a false um, belief has been embedded into the human mind successfully, a person then only notices those incidents and appears to confirm it and they become psychologically blinded from seeing the, ins, um, the, the greater number that refutes it. This is why many black people insist that we are worst enemies. No, they are psychologically blinded from seeing the reality of all the information that refutes it. Case, point, and proof. Those black people that have been brainwashed to believe that we never support ourselves, they insist that we're like crabs in a bucket, always pulling each other down. They are, they are psychologically blinded from seeing our reality. For example, in, uh, during the uh, 2008 election of President Obama, he received more black votes than any previous president in U.S. history. Millions of black people that had never before voted in any previous election registered and voted for Obama in 2008. In some states, black people stood in lines for almost five hours. During Obama's inauguration, millions of black people showed up in Washington, D.C. in record-breaking numbers, staying in this expensive hotel at their own expenses. And they stood outside in record-breaking cold temperatures to watch Obama being sworn in as the first African-American president. The, these facts and countless more totally destroys the myth that black people are like crabs in a bucket who never support each other, only want to pull each other down. But those black people who've been brainwashed to believe it, they only see what, they, what they've been brainwashed to see and they are psychologically blind from seeing our reality. The oppressor's depiction of the oppressed is never a true one. It's always falsely negatively distorted to serve the oppressor's hidden agendas. This fact has been a consistent this truth throughout human history and is still especially true in regards to black people living, um, living under white oppression. Keeping us believing the fraudulent worst about ourselves is how the white society now maintains their control over black people. This is what we call the black people's matrix. Through their monopoly of information, they have, they have created a prison for our minds. This is the reality. And as long as you think that our condition is connected to a biblical fairy tale or silly slave syndrome myth, you will remain mentally enslaved and you will remain as the white man's fool. 
Those black people who don't critically think never notices their mental change. It is a social science they're using against us. And here it is now, we've now been in America as a people for more than 400 years. If your best as, um, assessment of our condition is connected to a Bible brutally beaten into our minds, brutally enforced upon our ancestors, you are ignorant. You are ignorant and mentally enslaved. If your best assessments are that we're being controlled by a silly slave syndrome, which presents what would in fact be the least effective method of controlling generation of people, you are mentally enslaved. You are ignorant. Our core problem is the ignorant are ignorant of their own ignorance. The truth of our planet condition are social sciences that a white society deploys against us. The system, the true name of the system remains classified. So there, those of us who know of it have appropriately called it the Black People's Matrix. It's a psychological prison created for the collective minds of black people. They did this to us because it's the type of people they are. It's the way they've always been and it's the only way they know how to be. Our mission is to understand it, learn it, and develop counter strategies to free our minds from it. One love and peace, brothers and sisters. One love and peace. Welcome to reality.